All right, guys, this is one of my favorite times to do videos and Facebook Lives. I'm in front of 2244 Dickens Terrace in Newark. Uh, we had helped these new investors, my mentees, um, pick up their first rental property. Um, they're using the Burr method. We're going to not only show you the property. I don't know if you looked a couple months ago, you might have seen the, the pre-rehab the pre photos. We're going to do a walkthrough, and then I'm going to interview Bill and Karen. And I have two new students here as well. That got to, we got to bring them on and actually ask the questions one-on-one -on -one so they could ask themselves with the good, the bad, the ugly, and what they would have done different. So stay tuned. Let's walk in and meet everyone. Right, guys, they did a new door, fixed up the landscaping. Um, they got seed and stuff down, but it's winter. Won't grow for a while. Let's go through. Wait till you open this. Look at this, guys. So hi, this is Bill and Karen. And you guys might recognize Dave and Wendy on here. There's a lot of people on here. You want to just, first we'll do is we'll go a walkthrough, and I'll let you kind of, you both, Karen and Bill, explain to us what you've, uh, what you've done. So um, this is the front hallway. We've had the floors replaced in, in, in the front hall here. What kind of flooring did you guys this do? This is Portec. Okay. It's a, a laminate vinyl tile or plank. Um, it goes down very easy. Uh, they put down an underlayment. Material. Karen, get in here. Stop being Karen, camera shy. Uh, Karen probably picked out all these colors. Yes, don't don't said, take credit it, for the colors because no, I don't take credit for my colors. Not at all. Um, Why'd you go with this kind of flooring though? Because while it's waterproof, it's very durable. Um, it'll last. It's more durable than carpet. Um, carpet, from my understanding, typically you might have to replace between tenants. Mm -hmm. And we want to make this as low turnover uh, repairs in it's, the it's maintenance free as possible maintenance free, exactly. and let me tell you what not only that maintenance free i'm going here i'm not getting your boots i'm getting the floor <laughs> but um they are nice boots by the way but um the floor it does look beautiful well, let's walk let's walk so through we, the first we, floor we here play, replace all the doors in the house with six panel wow these were uh solid dark brown drab uh doors throughout so we've replaced them with six panels. Was that that expensive, the six panels? No, not really. Um, you, 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 can, you can get good prices on those. Shop around, go to Lowe's, go to Home Depot. <laughs> check the coupons. And, you know. and they don't work for Lowe's and Home Depot. This is not a, this is not a commercial for them. <laughs> I use both. Okay, good. Because no, no, more importantly, did you guys, we're going to interview you guys. Did you guys have fun doing the project together? Yes. Cool. Definitely. And it's their first one, guys. So this is this is why we're coming through here. Yeah, I mean, Home Excuse Depot me. sent me a coupon, so I used it for that, you know? Smart marketing for them. <laughs> okay. So um, we replaced all the light switches and outlets in the house um, because they were a, um, a beigey almond color. Mm -hmm. and now they're yeah, and, they and these are what we talk. This is something like we talked about the little items like this, pay, play, changing outlet covers. It just gives it a nice pop. Look how nice it pops, right? Everything pops in here. We're gonna work around. I don't want to. I'm already seeing how nice the doors look there and the handles. And you guys did an amazing job already. I haven't even seen. I, guys, I'm walking through here the first time, just like just like I'm right now with the video. So this is a surprise to me. Yeah, but you see the sliders as well. I don't want to. Brand new sliding glass doors, you know, and these are things that they probably didn't even have to do But they're gonna go they're using the same method. We go. Let's just fix the house up nice First of all, they have an open house if you guys are in Delaware and you're looking for a place I know they have probably 25 plus couples coming through for their open house for what they did for the marketing But they're having an open house Sunday from what time? And then Thursday if it's not rented, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be rented by Sunday but look don't, you don't have to hide, Dave. Come on. This is and new lines too. Everybody. I give Dave and Wendy credit because they, they were students too and they took the time out of their day to come and really learn before they take action. But new blinds. I mean, this is beautiful. The paint job looks really nice. I like the colors. All the fixtures have been replaced here. See, the little lights like this. What is something? Do you remember what a little light like this cost you? It's like. $12, 13 dollars. $12, exactly. Remember, Dave, I was talking about this on the training, these little lights and the, the outlet covers. You see, they actually do exactly what we say. The outlet covers are 56 cents a piece. How could you not, <laughs> how could you not change those things, guys? That's the important things that I see. That's, that's what I call the boogers in a room that drive me nuts when people don't change little things like this. The light looks beautiful. It's, it's less than $20 for a light. It's less 60 cents. I always call these things 60 cents a cover. Yeah. That's 53. Well, let's get in the kitchen. I love kitchens. Let's get in the kitchens. <laughs> Not just because I like to eat, but I love the way they look. Okay. Well, most, most of the kitchen, the cabinets and the counters. 
We're really good. So okay. But we, we did replace the stove and the dishwasher and the range hood. Very nice. And of course, painting. Yeah, they got very lucky. The cabinets were very good. And even if these cabinets, if they didn't like the color, I wouldn't have let them change them. I would just tell them have the cabinets painted. I would give them a the company to paint some. You're looking probably about $100 a door to paint, just so you know, rather than ripping these out. Um, these cabinets were in too good condition to actually rip out. We just picked floors that would go with the counters. You did a really good job with colors. I couldn't do this with the colors. This is you and Dawn's job. This is not, <laughs> I'm not good with colors. Uh, let's see what we did here. Remember the fireplace. Well, definitely painted. We so, had it inspected and good. We had the fireplace clean. Um, That's a nice feature right there, that fireplace. And um, the tile was existing, but the people that did the flooring put the molding around it so it, it ties it together. This is gonna be a really nice feature. Somebody renting it. They like fireplaces. Okay. okay. And, and new slider new replaced. slider here. What did you have to do to the fireplace? Just that... have it clean. It was filthy. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, yeah. that was under two hundred dollars, and it, it's, it's, it's it's safety. It's uh, yeah. Safe, you know, you but, but a tenant's going to love that because they're going to take if they see you took care of it and you get in here and say, guys, you can use this when you move in. They're going to you know they're going to appreciate that because a lot of landlords don't do that. They don't care about the tenants. They just they're just seeking rent. But look, guys, still six panel doors. These are very cheap to replace and and. Bill and Karen went with new handles, yeah, brush, we nickel, brush, to the brush uh, nickel. yeah, brush nickel handles. They're really nice. They used to be a, a, a brass. Yeah. They, yeah. Yeah. The, the we light just make sure the light fixtures, fixtures, brush nickel. I could see you guys had a lot of fun with this, like the decor. <laughs> I mean, and now you're learning. You guys, what's going to happen is next house you're going to have your SKUs. What do I call them? The SKUs. You'll list the SKUs. You'll eventually get to the point where you just go to Home Depot and you're like, all right, we need 10 doors, we need this many this, we need this many this, we need this many this. Because your colors are going to be the same pretty much every year. Unless you get like crazy, like I used to, and like try to design every house differently. You don't want to do that. It depends on what we keep. So they're, going to, they're going to Alabama with me. You're going to see the houses. That you're going to get bored of. After the second house, you're going to get bored because all the colors are exactly the same. But we do that for a reason. It's systemized. Systemized. We don't have to get our con. We don't have to go to Home Depot and Lowe's. We our contractors just know. Hey, I need five gallons of paint, same color every time. Yeah. Countertops. That's that's the easiest way to do it. We figured this one was because we were doing a lot of the kitchen. We wanted it to go with that. Yeah, you got a little lucky with the kitchen on this one because a lot of times you don't get to keep the kitchen, but this one you got to keep it, so you, it's, it's lucky. But all right, let's go. On, let's go upstairs. Downstairs look, looks awesome. And they ran the floor right through, nice and yeah. easy. New vanity. Is that a new vanity? That's yeah, a new vanity, new right? Vanity, yeah. New mirror, mirror, new light. And new toilet bowl, I hope, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do not keep the toilet bowl no matter what. All three. Every single house. In fact, I have one in Smyr Smyrna now. We kept it. Once again, we have to change it. It's not a leaking. So it's cost us more damage. Well, when, when, when I tried to turn off the water, that valve, I yeah. replaced the valves too. I replaced all the how, valves. How much did the toilet bowl cost you? 80 uh, something dollars? 80 to 90 dollars. And I've installed total, it's a hundred, total of 200 dollars, maybe with a plumber. It wasn't bad. But I had the valves replaced because yeah. the valves stuck open. Yeah. It's old. Just a little thing so that. If Let me close the lights here. All right, Bill, you guys might want to do a check on, you might have to do a GFI here. The, the breaker's a GFI. Oh, okay. All right, there we go. That's why I'm not an electrician. <laughs> we did get an electrician in. Yes. Yes, I remember that. Licensed electrician. Oh. We yeah, that's the two things you make sure you have license. Yeah. Licensed electrician, licensed plumber. Because God forbid you don't and something happens. With a whole new panel. All right, second floor, you redid the... Started the railing, painted it. Yeah. So this was a slider. That's what we took. Oh. Didn't we have conversations about yeah. this one? We did. And we switched it to a nice. window. Oh, and how's the outside look? Nice. Oh, I have to get back off to see the outside. <laughs> so you took on a lot of work with that. That was a big job. Yeah. Well. Right, what, so well, tell us why you did that. Uh, well, so we got a couple bids. Uh, Just so you know, first, we, we, okay. they had a sliding glass door here, and we had we had gone back and forth about whether 
Yeah. Uh, historically, there were decks on these places, but it's long gone, so they had barricaded it. Um, it got rest, different rest quotes, the <laughs> and the quote for taking out the slider and replacing it with the slider was about the same as doing window with wall, just because um, the extra work of putting in the slider on a second story would require the contractor to do more work. Am okay. The slider is pricier than the window. Yes. The window I remember you had asked me about it, and I said, well, you got to remember, if you take out the slider, and do this, you have to now build out the yes. wall in the back. So you price that up. Do you remember what the pricing was on that? No, not off the top of my head. Around? 1500 probably. That's not bad at all. And a slider would cost you, what, about 800 No, about 1200 The slider here would cost you 1200 So To get it in installed. But you see how the decision was made. That was a great decision because I said, if you can go to a window, it's great, but you just got to see how much. Mm -hmm. And you have it sided in the backyard now? No. Okay, what's on the, what, what do they do on the outside? They did a, 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 a line, vinyl panel. Okay. Same as what's in the front under the window. Okay. All right. Cool. Similar to the, 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 the front windows. Very good. So maybe one day we'll reside front and back. No, I, and you wanted to do that now. I told them, no, you're not moving in here. You don't need it at all. No. So there's no reason to. It's a typical uh, newer investor going through wanting to build a house like it's their own. <laughs> yes. But you did, you put the money where you needed to put it so far. So, and you see six panel doors, guys, all the way throughout. And they could have kept some of the doors. They could have kept the handles. And save money but yeah. once again it's not the best you, you don't do that because one is they're going to rent this out very quick people show up and they're going to rent it for more money than anywhere else in the neighborhood and people are going to take care of this why wouldn't people take care of this place it's brand new let's take a look in here ah. we had the um you did new doors door, right flooring no the door just needed a quick repair with some screws we did the uh, that was the same glass doors yes Okay, you new did the flooring. flooring. I remember toilet, that. And the new toilet. And this was, this was. This is existing. Yeah, that was here. But the faucets been replaced. Always change faucets. Guys. And the valves. Again, we yeah. changed the valves and the faucets. Smart. Because everything's stuck. And if you have a problem and you need to replace that mm -hmm. because your tenant breaks it, then you have to, you, you've got a water problem if the valve isn't. Changed. Right. And you know, the tenant, if there's a little leak, a tenant won't always complain. They'll just leave it. Uh, a lot of times they don't tell you every little complaint. Very nice. Yeah, and then we had them do tile along the baseboard instead of. Um, oh, yeah. The so the same table. tile went up. Yeah. And the very good, good use of the tile. A little waterproof. <laughs> it looks great. New toilet bowl. Of course. I know I'm going to ask you that every time. That's my pet peeve. There's people not changing faucets and toilet bowls and light switches and. Okay, let's go follow you to the next one. We did, uh, we did the smoke detectors in every bedroom. Well, that's a mandatory. We well, you did, actually, smoke detectors are not a mandatory in every bedroom, but that was smart. You guys did it. And those are carbon monoxide yes. smoke detectors. But you see are any... Hardwired or are those no, batteries? those are battery, but I got the 10-year ones that have the lithium battery. Deep, deep closet. Yeah. Plenty of but they went with six panels. You see how nice it looks? Six panels all the way through. They're so inexpensive, too. I think it's such a nice look. So, new vanity and toilet, mirrors, and lights in here. Okay. Pretty much the same as what you did downstairs. So mm -hmm. Yep. New and, and, and you see that, that if you look, this is the same exact vanity. How this much? Do you remember how much the vanity was? 109. Okay, so $100 for the vanity. Okay, so $100 for the vanity. Eighty dollars for the toilet, so you're one eighty. The light and the mirror is probably another forty bucks or something like that. Yeah. So they're two twenty. And, and, uh, and, and the tiles. And since we bought the faucets in bulk, we got a deal. So you, you're you're into this bathroom in materials for under three four hundred dollars plus yes. labor. And look at the bathroom, guys. Instead of doing linoleum floors, old vanity, old sink, old toilet bowl, for under four hundred bucks in materials, they got this done. And we did well on our tile both bathrooms. Too. Yeah, both bathrooms are the same tile. Right, we noticed, yeah. $80, $80 for the tile. Eighty dollars for the tile. So did you figure out how much it cost you to do each bathroom total with the labor? No. We haven't broken that out yeah. yet. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna have to get that next. We wanna see cheaper. wanna go through that with you because we have to break out our labor. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's what we said. We have to look at the labor and look at everything because you wanna get cost because then what's happened is it gets very easy to start to um, to start to actually um, give value to every property you look at. You're going to start walking through and say, okay, this is going to cost me this, this is going to cost That's why I kind of know what things cost. Yep. 
because I do them so much. Some things I don't do that much, but uh, some things I do all the time. Like I do doors all the time, handles all the time, vanities, toilet bowls. I know what they cost, but I, you could just tell me and I'll tell you what they cost. So did you do new windows here? Yes. yes. And these windows are actually um, a foot shorter than the old windows. The old windows were went longer and went down to an ankle height. And um, Which was dangerous. It was dangerous, you, and you need to get tempered glass for that type of window. Um, so we went with these uh, five foot instead of six foot windows. And it gives the room a little more space. I think it makes the room look nicer the way it up. And you had a little issue with the windows, correct? Correct. <laughs> Karen just laughs. laughs with it, you know? Yeah, what what issue did you have with the windows? Well, they 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 were measured incorrectly, but it's not a big deal because it worked out. The contractor fixed it, put the nice panels on the front of the house, and uh, people in the neighborhood were like, "Oh, that looks nice. Where did you get that done?" <laughs> that's awesome. Um, that, and that sort of thing instead of But it wasn't like an easy this wasn't like no. an easy roll just get in here and paint the carpet thing. This is you learned a lot on this one, right? Yes. Okay. Well, that was what's good because when we first got this, I remember we got this view and we said, hey, we'll help you. We'll go all the way through and do the rehab for you. And you guys took it on. I give you credit. They're like, no, we're going to do it ourselves. And that was awesome because now they learned. And every property they get, they're going to learn a little bit more. And, yes. and they know what to look for, what not to look for, and what to plan for next time. Because and what questions to ask. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, and we'll go through and, and, and kind of hear all the questions that you think you should ask, mm -hmm. um, what you would have done differently. What you, what you were surprised that came out good. Yes. Because um, there's always good and bad in every property, but that's what people don't tell you. You want to hear the good and bad of all properties. But um, this one, the good thing about this one is um, you're going to pretty much be able to put out all your money on this, on the refinance. That's where it's going to get real. <laughs> maybe a couple thousand dollars left in the bank, left in, that's it. And you'll probably cash flow, you know, between four and 600 bucks a month. Hopefully. So that'll be no. That's that's numbers. That's what's going to be. There's no hopefully on that. Um, that's just <laughs> that's just what it is. Numbers are numbers. They don't lie. Um, I don't have all the numbers in here of, of how much you're into this for. I don't I don't have that on me. But um, you guys probably know that offhand yeah. what you're into it for. You'll know what you're going to pull out of it. Um, you'll pull like I said. If not all, maybe a couple thousand dollars will be left in the property, yep. and you'll be positive four six four to six hundred bucks a month. You know, credit's good, income's good. You'll be able to do a refinance, and then you'll be able to rinse and repeat and get the next property. And you do four to six hundred dollars a month, and you do a couple of those, and you, you, it's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. you, know, you just give yourself a five to eight, seven thousand dollar raise a year just <laughs> buying more properties. So, and now you're getting a little bit better at this. So, real quick, what are somebody? You tell me what are some things that were that you learned on this one that you would? Um, I think definitely from the beginning when you start out. You might have a core team of people that you work with, but also reach out to other contractors, get multiple estimates, mm -hmm. because you never know if you're an electrician or your plumber or your, your guy that's going to do windows might come in a little high on the mm -hmm. quote. They might be booked out. They're working on their own projects or mm -hmm. other projects, and they can't get, fit you in. Mm -hmm. um, and you're looking at time. And you know the quicker you can get it done, the quicker you can get it rented to get that flow in. And um, a few of the things that we did, we got one quote, and, you know, one of the things you need to do is harass your contractors. <laughs> Don't harass them too much because they'll never come but, back. But it's yeah. a line. You have to bug them sometimes mm -hmm. because you're not the only person they're dealing with, but you want to get your quote so that you right. know, if you wait two to three weeks for a quote, which is what we did, that puts you back two to three sure. weeks. And then when the quote comes in and it's too high, then you're like, oh, no. What now I got to do this again. Now I got to find somebody else. All right. So that's why I always talk about the all-stock team. I always have three electricians, three plumbers, three painters. Um, even with me, I do a lot of properties. Even with me, it's I find it the same thing. You know, Sometimes they're busy, and I got to give respect to them. They're not going to leave somebody else's job just to come to me because then they leave that other person hanging. Mm -hmm. So once you know you're – here's the thing. Once you know you're going to be buying a property, usually you're closing within a few weeks to a month. You get the ball rolling. Now you have contractors you've already worked with one time. So they know you're serious. They know you pay on time. They know you don't nickel and dime them. They know you're easy to work with. You got to be easy to work with. Mm -hmm. Then they'll, you say, hey, this is Bill and Karen. You remember you did my house on Dickens Terrace. We got another one. We're closing in three weeks. We'd love you to get in there. You kind of know the numbers they're going to give you. The numbers, pending the materials changing price a little bit. But you have a good working relationship with them. They're not going to rip you off all of a sudden. You like their quality of work. 
You say, listen, we're going to have another one. We'd love you to be the first person in there. Yeah, and on my one contract. So yeah, that's the windows. That's why I'm, I'm pretty impressed that you guys did this on your own. And I was happy you did it on your own. <laughs> now, I went a little crazy. I said, geez, I could have built a house from scratch here. But I wanted you to learn, you know, because if you don't learn, I could teach you everything you need to know. But if you don't learn on your own, you'll never grow. There's no way for you to grow, right? And as you said, the relationships, part of it, we're still reaching out to contractors mm -hmm. for the first time. They don't know us. We don't know them. Right. So we're, it's slow. Right. It is. And you know what? Because so many people waste their time. And that's why I said you got to be an action taker. I always mm -hmm. talk about taking action. You, um, so many people waste their time just getting estimates and never doing work or just getting estimates so they could price out a house themselves and see what it's worth and what's not. And, um, you know, the contractors you're using now, here's the problem you'll see is the good ones are just, they're busy because of that reason. They're good. The bad ones are not busy because that reason they're bad. <laughs> so there's always, there's never, the one thing in this business is you'll never stop looking for good contractors. Okay. You'll never stop. So always plan to keep looking for them, treat them well. Um, but you learned the, the important thing you learned is not to sit back and wait on one contractor anymore yes. for an estimate. What are some other things that you learned good or bad? Um, anything built between 1965 and 1975 might have aluminum wiring, and mm -hmm. that adds to your cost. It puts okay. it to your cost, depending okay. on what needs to be remediated. Right. And if you want to have a safe place where you reduce the fire risk, you want to do have things, your outlets and switches remediated, um, the power panel, that's mm -hmm. an extra cost. How much do you just estimate, how much would you estimate on a house now, built between that time, figuring you have to change everything? Um, for for the panel for everything for the electric the electric um, four to five thousand dollars okay good so you put that in if you have to remediate it, it can only get better guys so figure that time frame in this and every area is a little different right. some places have knob and tube some have aluminum so every place every area location is a little different but just in that area just understand what it is because switches on average, can cost sixty to eighty dollars a switch. The contractor will charge you. Mm -hmm. And um, when you have to remediate every switch in the place, it adds <laughs> up. up. It does. It does. But you want to uh, you want to go through and you want to yeah. actually figure those costs in. And and sometimes you don't realize that you have those costs. Those are always hidden costs that you never realize. Like me, I always say when I open a wall, I always give a ten percent variance because I open a wall and I don't know what's in there. I don't know if termites have eaten the thing mm -hmm. or grew out. I've seen rodents, eaten wires, I've seen termite, I mean, I've seen it all. Um, so I always, when I do a rehab, I always figure 10% variance on my cost. Which what, is. is there anything else you guys? Um, those are probably the main things. Those are the main things. What are the cool things you learned in this? Well, yeah, you haven't refied out yet and got all your money back <laughs> yeah, yet. That's going to be pretty cool yeah, when you do that. Awesome. And then when you're like, so wow, we, we have all our money back and we start making money every month for doing nothing. It's like, what you're going to start to see is not on your first one, but when you start to get to like past 10, because I know you guys want to go get to at least 10, right? When you get past 10, you're going to start saying, well, this is for this one's college. This is for this bill. <laughs> That's kind of what we do on a house. We kind of say this house is going to pay for this bill. This is going to pay for this vacation. You're laughing, but that's kind of how, that's kind of how it gets right now. Um, because you can very easily see at $500 a month for doing this. I mean, how, how many people are going to give themselves $6,000 a year raises for not using their own money at all? I mean, you're just kind of putting it out there and pulling it right back. Minus maybe a couple thousand dollars, if that. And right now, it's just nice to see the before and after and see it yeah. actually almost done. <laughs> I know that's what you like, right? You like the project? Yeah. Because I, I know, I, I could tell you like, you like Dawn, you guys like, the, even Dawn said, she goes, I need a house because I need a project. I'm like, just get her a house so she has a project. I like the planning. You know? oh. Well, I Dave and Wendy, I want to get you, come on in. I want to say like this, ask some questions. These, these guys are awesome, so I wanted them to ask questions. Uh, are you going to allow your tenant to have a pet? No. No, no pets. Okay. And that's totally up to you guys. If you do, okay. just so you know, if you do have a pet, it's it's, re, it's a non-refundable security deposit for the pet. But that's totally up to you, what you I'm guys want. I'm highly allergic, so that is a factor. Okay. <laughs> no pet and hopefully no smoking. Well, you always tell them no smoking, but you come in and you do your inspections once in a while and you pay attention to that. Um, but here's the thing. We're going to get into that. You said no smoking, right? This is what I do. This is why I run open houses, right? Um, not that I discriminate, but I could kind of watch. Dawn watches who comes in the house. She could smell them. She yeah. could smell the smoke on them. She could see their car, how their car is actually, when they pull up. She could see if they bring kids in, how the kids are behaving. So that goes a lot into um, the people we want on our property. 
you know, if, you're, if your car is a wreck, you pull up here and it's filthy and it's a wreck, well, maybe you're going to be, if you come in here, you smell, reek like smoke. Well, you reek like alcohol. Well, maybe we don't want you in this house. There's a lot of reasons. Um, that's the only reason we would stop somebody if they're qualified for income and they haven't had evictions or anything like that. And that's your next step, right? The first yes. step. Let's talk about this. So you went through, you listed the house. Yes. How many, how many, uh, I mean, because this was their biggest so, worry. This was their biggest worry. Like, we're going to get this house, right? Are we going to get tenants? That was their biggest worry. And I kept saying, just don't worry about it right now. Just get the house done. I'll work on you and getting tenants, right? How... How many people have hit you? Have hit you up? So I've gotten probably close to fifty emails from Zillow. Wow! When we talked about this online, yeah. Um, yeah. just a quick. Um, I'm interested in the property. I responded to everybody um, and said these are the dates and times for the open house. Mm -hmm. The open house is mentioned in the description, but it's towards the bottom. They might not have read it. Um, we had. A, According to Zillow this morning, there were 999 views of this property in four days. A thousand wow. views. Wow. So what you want to do is, here's what I do is I, I have Dawn, Dawn handles this for me. Uh, you can print out the list of all the uh, people and you can actually call them and remind them, hey, we're having the open house on this and this time. If you want to do that, because okay. um, you, you've had 999 views, you've had only about 50 people hit you up. So I would go through, either email them all, have reminder we're doing an open house this time. You might, if, if you do an email, you might want to send pictures. Um, but we're looking forward to meeting with you. And make sure you have your applications that I sent you printed out. Yes. yes. Okay. Have it, those ready to go. Make sure people pay you if they're going to apply. Yes. Um, run them. Yes. Yes. Um, you're obviously not going to stage the house. No. When you, Dan... Uh, property on the market do you usually stage it or keep it empty? when i sell it i stage it when i rent it i don't stage it oh, okay. yeah we don't when you have it like this you're not gonna have to stage it okay. this is people are looking at apartments there's nothing that looks like this we go online and look there's nothing that looks like this this is like a brand new house okay mm -hmm. so you don't rent it furnished no 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 okay. this is not a, if it's a vacation rental yes this is no, no. this is not a, a rent just like this this is exactly how it is okay um and are you guys going to have a property management company no it doesn't make economic yeah. sense for one property. And and I wouldn't, I remember I told you in Delaware, until you have about at least 10, I wouldn't recommend a property management company. Do it yourself. And I'm going to help them with questions. They've already got all the paperwork. They have the, in fact, the exact email I sent to you guys is yeah. what I put up on, on our Facebook page on the steps taken mm -hmm. to get this rented, minus the paperwork is not up there. So they have the paperwork mm -hmm. to, to go, because they're ready to go through those steps. When, if you guys did it in Delaware, I'd give you the paperwork too on the steps, you know, as you, okay, do this. Now, when, when Bill and Karen, when they have um, an application, we're going to go through how to run, how to run those people, okay, in the application. And then the next step will be like, hey, here's the lease. How do we do the lease and the walkthrough? So we're going to take it step by step with them, but they have everything so they can at least go through it. There's nothing they don't have at this point. There's no reason at this to have a property manager in this area. One is nobody's going to treat your property the way you are. And two is you really want to learn what to do before you tell a property manager, expect a property manager to do. So. You guys can handle at least 10. Yeah. <laughs> we, we signed up for that, the site that Dan recommends for the background site. Mm -hmm. I actually created a separate email. That's something I learned. Um, mm -hmm. For the, the for just the rental property, and I use that to create the Zillow account. I use that to create the rental uh, check background check site. Uh, that way, I'm not everything coming into my personal email. I have a separate Gmail. It all, all flowing into. And that's something you're very good at. I don't have to tell you about that stuff. You're a, <laughs> Bill's an uh, IT tech techie out there, so a little bit more than I am. Website if I needed to. A little bit more than I am, but um. <laughs> Thank you. I know you guys have some other questions, right? Ask away. Because they're open. To, I mean, this is perfect because you're looking to get your first soon. They just got there first. There's no better meetup than this. Okay. Um, how, yeah, how bad was the property when you first got it? Structurally, not bad. I mean. What did you look for? You're going around. This is your first property, right? Yeah. Okay. So between choo for choosing the area, what did you look for? What I think uh, location, 
this property is a great location. It's right off 40 and Route 1. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the only thing I remember from people talking about real estate is the three L's, location, 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 <laughs> right? And, and really, I mean, it's so convenient to everything. We've got grocery stores over here. We have restaurants. One, if you, they work in Dover, it's not far to get to Dover. If they work up in Wilmington, it's not far. The other thing nice in here, too, is um, there's a lot of owner-occupied in here. It's not all tenants. So that's a good thing. When we, when we looked at this location, we said, you know, there's a lot of owner-occupied still in this neighborhood. There is a pride of ownership. You can see people doing work. They're redoing siding in here. So they're not, they're not willing to let these houses fall apart. That's pride of ownership. Um, so that, that helps. Um, the lady that was in here was 90-something years yeah, old. She took care she of the place. Yeah, she was, she, you know, she, if she's here by herself, that's a safety thing, right? 90-something-year-old woman living here by herself. She loved it here. She just wound up going to Texas for her ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, she she wanted to go out there to the ministry, but she loved it here. She didn't want to, one of those people that didn't want to leave her house. So, um, but obviously she didn't maintain it struct. I mean, uh, she didn't upgrade it to the to you know these colors. She'd probably be like, oh my god, you know. <laughs> but like the hot water heater, it was is relatively new, so we didn't replace that. The AC unit relatively new, we didn't replace that. The furnace was. From the beginning of furnaces, um, <laughs> it was a singer right. furnace. So and we, it, we had that replaced. And you know what? That thing would probably last another 50 years, unfortunately. But it's we play, replaced those. They don't make those. Like but My thing was the furnaces, 10 years old and older. Change them. Roofs, yeah. 10 years old over. Change them. HVAC. Okay, I was going to ask. Yeah, and the yeah. roof was done. That was done early on. Yeah. Because um, my insurance actually was very concerned about the age of the roof. Mm -hmm. Because my insurance agent came and took pictures of the outside, and the underwriters saw the roof and said, "Oh, that needs to be done." Now, how much uh, was the roof to replace the roof? Um, uh, thirty-six hundred dollars. Oh, that's all. Yeah, it's not because it's a town. It's not a big house. Yeah. It's a townhouse, so narrow and long. <laughs> you'll pay. You'll pay investor pricing is going to be around three hundred dollars a square, give or take. So depending how many square it is up there. So, I, you know, sometimes I'll pay 200 150 a square, sometimes 400 depending on what you do. But that's kind of, uh, these roofs are going to be about $3,500 for townhouse. A little house, I got that little house, I think I told you guys about roof. If it's 2000 it's a lot. You know, it's so small. And, and this window had a crack initially, so we knew that had to be replaced, but we were planning to replace all the windows anyway. So. Your windows are easy to see, replacement. Roof is sometimes tough because you're not going up on the roof. Um, the things behind the walls are sometimes tough because you don't know yeah. what's behind the walls. I mean, we, we found a little bit of rot in, in the floors by the front door, by the back slider, the entryways, but that was remediated by, yeah. by having the uh, uh, slider replaced and um, the subfloor. They just cut it out and put it yeah. in a piece of wood. In. Yeah, and see now what's going to happen is now when they have tenants in here, they're not going to have these little items come up. Tenants aren't going to get pissed off because things because things don't work, um, and that just makes for a happier tenant. And a happier tenant just takes better care of your property. Forget about the pain on them; they just take better care of the property because they're going to walk in here and see a brand new house. They don't see this for you. Don't get this for rent. This is not. They're not out there. Everybody else is just putting band aid on on things, but putting lipstick on a pig is what I call it. <laughs> That's just what they do. Okay. Yeah, it what is. Did you, what did you do out front for curb appeal? Not much. Well, it is it is winter time, so it's hard to really. Yeah, yeah. So we we do have to reseed the front and put some straw and seed because with the contractors coming, they you know park their vehicles in the dirt. We had warm days and cold right. days and mush and it is what it mm -hmm. is. I think most people are going to focus on on the front, the curb appeal. We replaced the front numbers um, because they were all tarnished. The front light. Hasn't been replaced yet, but we have a replacement light that's on, on the list of things to be replaced. Um, and uh, the front knobs were replaced to match throughout the property. That they were I'm just going to look on here, guys, too. I have a lot of people on here. I'll see if there's any questions. No, just painted the front door. And replaced all the hardware. Yeah. Okay. Let me just see if I have any questions here, too. Hey, good morning, Desi. I'm going to see if there's any questions for you guys, if you don't mind answering them. That's fine. Hi, Desi. <laughs> he's still there, yeah. Yeah, he's, still, he's actually showing the other property to some people right now with my acquisition manager. Uh, Jeff, Jeff Quinlan, where is this? How much did they pay reno and rent? Thanks. Well, this is in uh, Newark, Delaware. Um, do you remember around how much your reno was? I know you don't have the exact number right now. Yeah. 
about thirty five. And what is the rent on this one again? Thirteen fifty. Thirteen fifty. Okay, great. Thirty five thousand for mm -hmm. the renovations. How did you find this property? Dan, 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 Dan acquisition man. Yeah. yeah. We were going to buy this property, and then they were like, hey, we're looking, we need a property. I'm like, well, I got one, so this is kind of what we have. Um, can we share the numbers on this one, Dan? Um, well, I think we just, what was the purchase price? I don't remember. 105. 105, okay. Um, so 105, they're into it for 35,000. We put 20, 40. 25 down. We put 20 okay. down, and then five close. And we were able to get them fine it we were able to get them private money on this one uh so you're about 140 and what's the comps on this thing um 153 with 160. Uh, okay so they're it's still in with about 10 percent equity in there okay so they'll probably leave about 10 percent of their money in there pull everything else out their mortgage payment will be um at the top of my head i don't i don't know if top of my head what your mortgage payment will be probably about Seven, $800, okay, let's even say $800 yeah. and they're getting thirteen fifty, so they're about $550 positive a month. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's if that's pit, principal and just taxes and insurance. Yeah. Okay. And sewer is low. Yeah. yeah. Sewer we're covering, the other utilities. Matt Netch says the place looks great. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. I'm saying thanks for them. <laughs> I didn't do the work they did. Uh, what are real numbers, purchase, price, repairs, financing methods, versus rent? Okay, so you heard... Someone asked Josh, everyone wants to know numbers, right? So Josh asked that. We just went over some of those numbers. We don't have the 100% exact yet, but the, we have estimated. Uh, financing, they're going to cash out. They're going to do a rate and term refinance on this. They're probably going to get 70 75%, depending on what their bank gives them. Um, they're, they're strong borrowers, so they'll have no problem getting that. Uh, it's their first property. They can probably even get 80%, but it depends on their bank and what they get. That's, that's totally on them. Um, and then rent costs, they're going to be about thirteen fifty a month. So they'll make about $500, let's say four to $600 a month, positive cash flow. Um, let's say they even leave 10,000, 15, let's say they leave 15,000 in here, take $500 a month, multiply by 12 is 6,000, take 6,000 divided by 15,000. That's, I don't want my calculator out right now, but if you have a calculator, that's some pretty good yields, right? What is it? Two and a half, three. Two and a half, three, what? Six thousand into fifteen thousand. Well, no, no, fifteen thousand divided by into six thousand. I'm sorry. So you're probably like your yield's going to be like thirty something percent mm -hmm. on this, plus your depreciation, mm -hmm. plus your tax. I mean your debt reduction, plus your interest right write offs. So they're going to see some really really nice returns on this property. Plus it's in a decent area. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we don't have to go into a low an area to get these type of properties. No, it's a great location. It really is. Okay. I think that's it. Guys, if you have any other questions, ask them real quick. I'm taking enough of their time. They have work to do because they have to prepare for their open house here tomorrow to get this thing rented. What's included in the rent? Um, Liv just, living space. Just the living space? They pay, so, their, they pay okay, hot water. water. And the, the, the sewers included because that's okay. a quarterly or annual It's an annual fee. Okay. Um, Everything else. Electricity. They, they have to fill the, fuel, fill the oil tank because it is oil heat. Okay. Um, they're responsible for any internet and TV. Okay. And <laughs> okay. Electricity and, and electricity and yeah. water. There's no ut yeah, that's their uh, utilities. Delmarva and Artisan, and then I'm gonna have them sign up with the uh, Friendly Oil, I think, with the. And you do know we talked about right covering yourself. They have to have renters insurance. Yeah, have rent. Yes. Insurance and naming us as a yes. Pay yes. Okay. Before they move in, they have to prove they have renters insurance. Which is only about one hundred twenty-five dollars a year, okay. something like that. They could just go through the normal car insurance company, and then, like I said, they're going to name Bill and Karen as the lost payee, mm -hmm. um, and they have to prove their utilities are on in their name before they have day of moving. Okay, because they need a lease to turn that on, so you'll have to give them the lease in advance. Right. Okay, now when they sign a lease, they one month one month deposit non refundable upfront. So that's their security deposit they give you on the lease signing. So if they rent this thing out, let's say for March first, somebody might sign the lease this week. I mean the they might sign the, uh, the deposit this week, so they're going to give them thirteen fifty this week, and then on the first when they move in, they'd give them the other thirteen fifty. You don't take the rent till they actually move in, but the, the one month is non refundable. Are you going to have the people give you checks or direct deposit? How are you going to collect the rent? Um, I'm probably going to have them do Venmo. For wait, for now, we're going to change that. We're going to change that. Why? Because it because Venmo is not. I don't even have it on here. Venmo is knocking people okay. off for business. 
They don't like people using it for free for business. So there's a there's a program I use. It's like nineteen ninety nine a month. And I think I get like 20% off, so maybe $4 off. But people can actually pay you with credit cards, ACH. If they have an issue, they can – I'll put that up online and I'll show people how to use it. checks are an option too. It depends yeah. on the tenant. We'll just yeah. that. Or you could have them direct deposit and stuff like that. But Venmo just recently started changing and they're knocking people's account off for rent. Okay. They want you to use like PayPal and charge the 3%. So I, I – if you use this other company, I don't have it in front of me right now, but if you use the other company, any they can use credit cards to pay your rent, and the credit card fee goes on to the tenant, not to you. So it's, everything's... And most likely checks for now, uh, just pay us every month. Or you can even have them deposit it in an account for you. Mm-hmm. Okay. You can set up an account, they can deposit it in. Uh, Bank of America has uh, a debit card. They call it a debit card for renters. They actually put the ATM card, they put the card in, they can only deposit money. And they put the card in, it opens up the account, they put the check in, it goes right into your rent account. So that's another option. Yeah. So Bank of America is another option here. Is there a, well, what is the service fee for that? I don't think there is any. So I don't think there is a fee. I don't know. You got you to gotta look. I haven't used Bank of America in years, but you got to look. It's definitely not a Bank of America commercial. I don't <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, there's, there's, there's a, a ton of ways to collect rent. But um, I'm going to recommend everyone start switching over to that other company. It's better. Is there anything you wish you did differently? Now that everything's done, is there anything you wish you did differently? Mm. I think we're pretty happy with the way it turned out. Probably get more estimates. Like you said, yeah, the more, more estimates. estimates. I mean, okay. Work a little faster on it. Yeah. Uh-huh. But honestly, we had Thanksgiving and Christmas in there, so that didn't help the timing. That's true. <laughs> that is true. And the winter, yeah. winter months, so... What about your uh, scope of work? How did you set that up? <laughs> we we well, did we well. Dan Dan did middle. a walkthrough with mm-hmm. us when we when we acqui- uh, did the acquisition, um, and we we did a uh, like you uh, broke down all the oh, things he suggested, <laughs> and then um, we went with that. And Karen, the spreadsheet wizard, created a spreadsheet. <laughs> It's all on a spreadsheet for how much we paid for everything, mm-hmm. all the different numbers. We kept track of what we initially the estimated. Driving back and forth spent. here mm-hmm. is on there. Oh, you actually put that on there, yeah. too? Oh, yeah. They're good. Um, so they're, they're good. Time. All, all, the, all the different things. And, you know, um, all the, the, the contractors, by and large, gave me a scope kind of document when, you know, I asked them to do the work. How'd you? So, how, I was gonna say, how'd you pro, how'd you protect yourself with the with the money with the contractors? We paid over time. So most, you did a draw schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Most of them did. They most wanted some up front, finished. maybe half or a quarter, depends on the the project. Right. Depends and on the and, materials and right. um, you know, the one guy that did the windows and the sliders, I worked with him before, so I had no problem giving him half up front because okay. I know he's reputable and he's gonna get the job done. They have to buy the windows, they have to buy the materials to do it, and then the rest covers the labor for them. And, um, you know, the, it's a draw schedule, like Dan said, where um, portioned out, and maybe two payments, three payments, it just depends on how many, how much you're paying, really. Um, so, so, when you doing it, how it so when you went and got the estimate uh, for the contractor, did you do labor only or labor and materials? Depended on the contractor and Most what was being done. Most of them was labor and materials. But some of, depend. Like, a lot of the finish work, so like okay. the doors we bought at Lowe's and the paint we bought at Lowe's and the smoke detectors and the blinds and we bought at Home Depot and we, we staged them and then we had a handyman do the installation of those things. Yeah, we bought um, the toilets and the vanities and the mirrors and the fixtures and all it, of that, it, but um, we didn't buy the windows. Or for the a, a lot of the re- rehab, like the finish work was done by a handyman and we bought the materials he loaded them in his truck and brought them here was that mark my yeah mm-hmm. he did a good job right he, did. he better he better <laughs> he does a lot of my work for me so he did a great um, job. but now they have all the skews of kind of what they want so it's going to be real easy like you know karen could just say hey, bill we need like six lights to go get the same exact lights and yeah. you could actually set something up at the service department at home depot or lowe's and you don't even have to show up. Yeah, we did a lot of online orders actually, yeah. where we ordered. Mm-hmm. A, a, like Mark gave me a list, and I went through and I just ordered this stuff at, online at Lowe's, 
and it was waiting for us. Yep. And did you order the blinds online like we do? No, I went, oh, you went, we to, went to Home Depot. They yeah. had them in stock oh, the good. right size. Wow. Because I get them on like custom blinds. Like I'll go online and I get them dirt cheap. We, so. we looked at those, but because these were off-the-shelf sizes, we they were easy. Same yeah. pricing. Good. But see, so you learned so much on this, and every property is just going to get a little bit better and a little bit cheaper for you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be faster and cheaper, every property now, because now it's just, it's skew numbers. Hey, we know which paint we want. How many buck? how many gallons do we need? We need five gallons, ten gallons, just order it. We know the lights that we like. It's just quicker, get them in there. We know what to do, you know. You got any of this? And all the carpet was replaced, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. And the padding and parts so, of the stuff. So we did the mid-grade padding. We didn't do the best padding. We didn't do the worst padding. We did the in-between one. <laughs> and you got a good price on the flooring, right? Yes. Yeah. We, yeah. I mean, not that this is a shell, but we went to Air Base right. and had them do all the flooring uh, downstairs and upstairs. The tile was done by our handyman, and um, we just bought the, the tile, tile mark. And we asked, where, where, what's, what's on clearance? <laughs> That's how you do it. On clearance, we went on clearance. Okay. Even granite, if you were to get granite, you get the clearance items. You get the stuff that they have a ton of. And if you, it's it, small, we didn't need a lot of square right. footage. So. And they don't care, like, it's high in tile, low in. They just want tile. They want granite. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't have to. It's not your personal house, but you're giving them top quality stuff. I mean, they're getting linoleum in a bathroom that tears up or curls up or, you know, people put water on it and it pulls up. So uh, tiles won't do that. Yeah. They have to actually break the tile. And the tile here was very dated. Right. In, in both bathrooms, right. they were little tiny squares with a lot of dirt between mm -hmm. them. Be, just because they age. Right. The grout original goes at right. the time. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, like I said, this house should be good for years to come. And so now you have maintenance free for a good, I mean, other than a little thing here or there, I mean, they shouldn't have anything big for 10, 15 years, if anything. Yeah, How long mm -hmm. do you plan on keeping the property before you... We, we haven't even thought about selling it. No, I wouldn't, yeah. Okay. Just this no, is our first... No exits. Knowing me, I, I, I don't see, you know, uh, exiting from we'll this. Just Keep collecting the kids, the kids are already, the kids are already counting their their bank accounts. Yeah. <laughs> Believe me, I guarantee the kids already have their minds on this. Hey. Yeah, I mean, we're just we're just gonna hold it. You know, I know a lot of people talk about exit strategy. I think you know if we needed to sell this in a pinch, we could, because right. the values are good around here. The comps are good, um, and uh, the property is uh, in good shape. So. You know, I don't think it would be a problem selling it. I think right now there's enough on the market. But even if they sold it and made themselves twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, right? If they we're saying they're going to get $500 a month plus tax deductions, depreciation, debt reduction, cash flow, rent increases every year or two years, value increase, they, to, you know, they sell it, they make $30,000, they lose 40% to the government, that's 12000 off, they only made 18000 Think how many months rent pays back that 18000 if they sold it, there's no benefit. And so that's why we talked about flipping and that's why I don't flip as much anymore. For me to flip, I have to see north of 80 grand on a flip to even think about it. Otherwise I don't flip. And I'm not even selling like this. Like I don't, I don't like selling these off. I only no. sell, no, well, because well, I'd rather keep it in my portfolio, right? <laughs> so. We'd like to have retirement income that's right. not solely based on social security or that's exactly yeah. what we're Bill, Bill doesn't want to count on corporate America anymore, no, right? No. <laughs> Picked me out. Now, obviously, you've got your own corporate entity set up, correct? That is for in the plan. business. That's question one. Question two, are you going to take your portfolio and move that into some type of a retirement self-funded account and channel everything through that? No. You can't, you can't do that. You can use your retirement account to fund this, but you can't take it and revert it back to a retirement account. Like, you can't put this into a self-directed IRA, right. but you could use a self-directed IRA or 401k to buy these. Okay. But you can't now buy it and say, hey, now bump, so dump, dump it into my IRA. So this can't be an asset, um, yeah, an asset type within? Yeah, the, yeah, but you have to use your self-directed IRA to buy it. You can't like, you can't, it it. you can't now take it. You can't take it now and then dump it in your IRA. You could have used, like if they have an IRA or a 401k, mm -hmm. they could have used that to buy this property. And that stays in there. The IRA owns it. You don't own it. But you can't now that Bill and Karen own this. They can't say, hey, let's 
deed it into our IRA. You can't do it that way. You could deed it into an LLC right. later like on. In the future. We haven't, we haven't yeah. gotten to that. Yeah, and that's a kind of one step at a time. A lot of people, what happens is they get they're so stuck on, on, on an analysis, no. and I call it paralysis by analysis. <laughs> um, they worry about LLCs and they worry about everything and they don't get started. Like if you don't have anything, get started. Just put yourself on an insurance policy. God forbid something happens, they're covered. Maybe you want to get an, an umbrella policy if you own a bunch of properties. Everyone's like, well, I'm not going to start until I get an LLC. Here's the other thing. Your financing won't be nearly as good with an LLC as it will be in your personal name. So you got to remember that. Like LLC financing, you don't get 30-year fixed at you know four and change percent rates. You get a 20-year amortization or a 25-year amortization with a five or a 10-year balloon, and your rates are higher because they're commercial loans. So you always so, want to keep it in your personal name first. With so a, did you purchase this as a personal owner occupied? Or did you no, 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 that's fraud. Did you, as an investment, yeah. as an investment. But you still couldn't do an investment property in your personal name with the bank. Mm -hmm. But you can't say owner occupied because that's fraud. That's bank fraud. That you go to jail for. We don't want. We don't like jail. <laughs> we don't want jail. No, don't mean, lie to get a better because your interest rate will be about three quarters of a percent higher being an investment property, even in your personal name. So some people think they're smarter than the bank and they put in their personal – they say it's owner-occupied. Mm -hmm. You'll get away with it until you don't get away with it. And I like to sleep at night, do things legit. Yeah, I, don't like, like I don't like to – yeah, but I just like to sleep at night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whether it happens or not, I want to do it legit, and that's Absolutely. it. So what about the insurance? How did you insure it since you're not in an LLC? You just called up my uh, – I'll give a plug for Tom Delavich, State Farm in Dover. Well, there you go. You can give a plug. If he did, he, uh, listen, I'm all for if somebody did a good job for you, give him a plug. He drove all the way up from Dover to take a look, take the pictures and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just insured it. They asked me a bunch of questions, uh, just like you would for any insurance. And it's like but he, he does your own insurance. Yeah, all right. So don't, don't call your own insurance yeah, and they'll probably do the same thing. Yeah. Any insurance, insurance will do the same thing for you. Okay. So. But you can do it in your personal name as an investment property. Yep. Wasn't a problem. Okay. And like you what said earlier, they insurance? were very happy that we were redoing Just the, the they, they have um, specific insurance for rental properties mm -hmm. that, that are for the owner of the rental property versus the type of insurance we mentioned earlier, which mm -hmm. is for the renter. And they underwater. They just, the big concern for them was the roof, and we had that done right away. Yeah, you you can understand they don't want to they don't want to insure a property and all of a sudden the roof goes and they, now they're paying for a roof you yeah, know absolutely. so they protect themselves too they do their own due diligence. Yeah. Do you have a home warranty? No. Okay, on this okay. It's a it is a good idea to get one sometimes though, but when you have all new appliances and stuff, it's not a huge deal. But if you don't, because I've changed every HVAC system I, I own when I've kept them, I've had to change them. In fact, I just changed one in Smyrna two weeks ago. Cost me forty three hundred dollars to change it, and it was only three and a half years old. What happens? The people put it in, 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 in uh, incorrectly when they put it in, and the water was leaking back into the unit. If I had the homeowner's war warranty, I would have had that for free. So it's like five hundred dollars a year. It's something you might you know fixes appliances and all that stuff. Trust me, since sliced bread. I, every time I don't, I, I have to fix something. I'm like I should have that homeowner's warranty. <laughs> so and I don't have them on my properties either, but I. We, One of those things I should. What we are planning to do is set aside a percent of the rent each month ah. for the account for future maintenance. Mm -hmm. Ah, I love it. I love hearing that. <laughs> anyway, That's the reserves we always talk about. Five, I always tell people. Five to ten percent. We're going to put yeah. in this account. And what you what you do is if you have an old, I have a spreadsheet I use for it. And if you have like an HVAC system that's, let's say, eight years old and you know it's going to last 15 years, you say, okay, a new one's going to cost me $3,000. I have seven years left. How much do I have to save per year for that? And that's how you figure out a reserve account. Mm -hmm. But if they're doing 10% of their rent, they're going to be part. I mean, because they've pretty much replaced everything in here almost. So they're going to be fine. We don't have anything on the list that should need to be replaced anytime soon. Mm -hmm. But we're going to set aside in that way when we hit the point, whether it's siding or something. Or yeah. yeah. When they want to do siding, they don't have to come in at a pocket. I mean, they are coming out of pocket, but they don't feel it. We'll just automate it. 10% yeah. of your rent go to... I call it vacancy and maintenance reserves. Now, is this an HOA? Is there yes, a there's an HOA. The, the, it's very small, a minimal amount. There is an HOA. It's a very, very small community. There is a little pool you can see out the back window, and that um, there is an application for the pool, and if the 
tenants have their renter agreement, they can join the pool as well. We know where Bill will be all summer. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to take care of your own pool. You just will <laughs> keep yours closed and come here. So that's another plus for the tenants, actually. Yeah. Uh, this is a really nice area. Let's, I mean, we saw the house. The house is beautiful. Tenants get a brand new house. They're getting a pool. It's, beautiful, it's nice. cheap enough rent to be in this area. Close to Route 40, close to 95, close to Route 1, close to 273. I mean, you're right in the middle of everything. You could be in Wilmington in 15, 20 minutes. You could be in Dover in a half hour. I mean, you'd be in the beach in a little over an hour and change. It's Philly in 40 minutes. You're really central to everything. With rent at that price, is pretty cheap for a brand new house, essentially. Yeah, I mean, the rent's exactly what Zillow says it should be for this area. Mm -hmm. And it's all been done. So. Mm -hmm. And Zillow is pretty accurate with rent. Value. Yeah. Well, well, that's the one thing with Zillow. They're not accurate with values, but they're very accurate rent because most people list their properties for rent on Zillow. So that's why they're very accurate rent. I always talk about it. That's why I had them do Zillow. Rocks. I, I was very impressed. Did you post this on Craigslist? Yes. Uh, maybe three emails from Craigslist. The Craigslist doesn't tell us how many people have looked at it. Mm -hmm. Zillow does either. Zillow is very helpful because I'm actually looking at Zillow at, at, uh, from my one email and then the other email. And the other email, I can look and see how many people have actually viewed it and mm -hmm. saved it. Mm -hmm. There's other programs, too, where you can pay a little bit, mm -hmm. and it populates them to all these other, and that's what I was telling you. I says, don't, don't mess around with so many of them. I says, if you mess with those, those two, you're really going to get what you need. Yeah, well, I mean, and Zillow already shares Does it Trula and Hotpads? Yeah, well, Hotpads bought Zillow. Okay. Or vice versa, I'm sorry. So just by us yeah. putting that on Zillow, it appeared on the Right, website. they bought each other. That's why I say just, just stick with those. I like Zillow myself. Yeah. was reason when we were house hunting for our permanent residence. The values just aren't there. Yeah. It's very reasonable. Well, the value. Yeah. other people said, it was very reasonable. Well, values aren't good because, like, for instance, they bought this house a lot cheaper than the value, so it's going to bring the comps on Zillow down. Okay. So they're going to say, this house, well, how could it be worth what, you, what you're saying it's worth when you only paid what you paid? Well, they paid what they paid because it was the distressed house. Mm -hmm. So that Zillow doesn't take that into effect. Uh, Bank-owned homes, uh, uh, foreclosures, short sales, tax liens. If you paid, let's say, $50,000 for this house, right away it takes down the whole neighborhood. So they don't take into effect cash sales or anything like that. So that's why. But the rent is real because that's what people list it for. So that's why the rent is real. Okay. So Zillow, if Zillow can actually was, if it was a smart enough system to actually know that the house was a distressed house, a foreclosed house, a short sale, then it would make more sense to, than the values. But if it's all brand spanking new houses, then it is what it is. That's going to have it accurate. But when you're in a neighborhood like this, when you're going to have different situations, estate sales, um, short sales, maybe a foreclosure here and there, it's not going to take that into effect. And it's going to say, okay, you bought this house for $100,000. How could you say it's worth $200,000? It's not. It's worth $100,000. Now everybody else's house here is going to go down in value because of that. So that's why I don't trust Zillow values. I trust realtor values. I look at comps. I have a realtor send me comps. And if you know, I, like I sent you that other house, I sent you a comp, right? Yep. I only use comps. Unless I know, like, if I buy another house in this area, I, know, I don't need a comp. I know exactly what they go for. <laughs> you know? And you would know. Like, if you saw another one in here, someone mm -hmm. came over, hey, hey, you have that house. Would you want to buy another one? You might. And you want, want to start knocking on doors eventually and see if anyone – I'm, I'm, I'm serious. That's how you find houses. You know these houses. You know, you'll see how fast they rent. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be pretty shocked even in the winter if you don't have this thing occupied by March 1st, even though it's late in February already. I mean, absolute worst case scenario, people have to give 30 days notice to move out, maybe April 1st. But by April 1st, without a doubt, it'll be rented. I can almost make that guarantee. Now, what made you choose this neighborhood subdivision versus the one across the street? That's where I had a house for them. They needed a house. I and this, that. Yeah. Well, two things. They needed a house, and this is where I had one. And I had another house, too, but it was too expensive for them. For you gotta remember, remember when I say Delaware is really tough yeah. because you gotta find a house that fits the numbers. Mm -hmm. So they're all in this house for about the one thirty five, one forty. Their rent is thirteen fifty. They got that one to one ratio. Right. It's gonna work for them. Okay, if I got them a house for two fifty and I can get twenty five hundred dollars rent, it would work for them. Those two hundred fifty thousand houses don't go for twenty five hundred dollars in rent. 
our houses where we live go for about twenty five hundred in rent, mm -hmm. but we're in the four fifty to five hundred thousand dollar range. Exactly. So it doesn't work. That's why Delaware is a very tough place to make that work, to to be in a good area. A lot of times to be in this price range, you're going to be in Wilmington, which a lot of people don't want to be in. So that's you got to find that one to one ratio. So they're all in at a one to one ratio right now. I always say give or take, right? They're at, let's say one thirty five, one forty. Mm -hmm. They get thirteen fifteen rent. They're right there. Mm-hmm. Thirty five, so one forty. Charging thirteen fifty. Mm -hmm. But we also have a rehab cost. Right. Right. Okay. So let's say about one forty and they're charging thirteen fifty. Yeah. But we so did put money yeah. down on that one oh five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We didn't So that's how we were, I was able to get them the private money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So first time, right? Mm -hmm. First time buyers, they were able to get private money. So when people are scared about money, what do I always say? Get a good deal. And how much better of a deal could it be when I'm it's the deal I'm giving them, and I know it's a good deal. Mm -hmm. I can just go to my lenders and say, hey, this is a good deal. These are good borrowers. If they don't perform, I'll take it back from them. And they put money down. So they had money down on a good property with equity and skin in the game. Very easy to get private money on these deals. Mm -hmm. Well, you were backing it too. So. Well, I knew if they didn't pay, I would just pay it. <laughs> and now they already gave, I don't remember how much they gave down, but I won't even put that on here. But they gave a decent amount of money down. What's the worst that could happen? They pay me back. If they don't pay back, I got a house with another however much they put down that I know it's worth it because I've already – I went into the contract on this house to buy it. I didn't go into the contract on this house to sell it. Mm -hmm. I just only got it for them because it's it's them. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I will not go into a deal that I'm not willing to own. So this would have been mine. So – <laughs> no, no, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm so happy. You got, I really am because you know what? Anyone that takes action and does their first deal, the first deal is the hardest, and then it just gets, it gets easier. Obviously, it gets easier and easier. You know, we could talk till we're blue in the face, but you still haven't done the refi. You still haven't seen the rent coming in. Once you see that, we're going to have different conversations. Are you looking for the next property, or are you waiting? Or <laughs> Well, you... one of the things Dan mentioned is there's a seasoning, and a lot of it depends on the bank and the institution mm -hmm. that lends you the 30-year fixed. Mm -hmm. um, we, we purchased this in November, so we're just coming up on the six months that is that seasoning. But it depends on the institution. If they want you to have a renter there longer than a month or two, um, we need to start... Uh, Researching and going out and finding that. Yeah, they got, next thing they got to just talk to the bank. Banks want three, six, or one year seasoning, which means they, they what that means is they, since you bought it for, I'm just going to use 100, it's easier. Since you bought it for 100, if we're only going to give you 75%, we're only going to give you 75,000 because you bought it for 100. We don't believe the value went up in the first few months, even though you did the work. What they're going to want to see is they want to see Karen's spreadsheets with all her receipts and everything she did which she's very good at having, obviously. She's better than me, even that. She could supply that to the bank, and the bank will say, okay, I could see that the house is worth now you, you 140, all right, because that's all the work you put into it because it's not seasoned, so it's only 140. We'll give you a percentage of that. But if you, if you do the three or six months or one year, whatever your bank says, they'll say, we'll come out and send an appraiser out, and we'll give the new value because you did all this work. And they'll say, okay, this house is worth, let's say, 200,000, 180, whatever they say it's worth, we'll give you 80% or 75%, whatever your credit worthy is, whatever your income is, and they'll take usually 75% of the rent and use that as income. So it'll help you. It's not just your work income, it's also the rental income, as long as you have a lease in place. But that's all depending on which bank you go to. Now, they're in a situation where they can walk into like their, their local banks because mm -hmm. it's their first, first four properties, it's very easy to do. And a lot of a lot of my uh, investors will do four properties in one person's name, four in the next person's name. So husband will do four, wife will do four, because they get better rates on the first four. And after four, from five to ten, they want they'll only lend you, let's say, instead of seventy five, eighty percent, they'll maybe only lend you seventy percent. Okay, so up to ten is very easy. Four is very easy. From five to ten is doable. After ten, you have to go commercial loans. Which is still fine. The numbers still work. It's just not as good, but the numbers work. It allows you to go to a couple hundred properties very easily. It sounds unrealistic, but it's not unrealistic. <laughs> it's time. It is time. But, you know, because they're going for the better rate, the better term, if this was a commercial loan, they could have this thing refied today. Like you could close on it, refi it immediately. That's commercial. Because it's business. This is not a business right now. So... 
Anything else? Um, any other protections that you would put in, in place between you and the tenant? And those are in the lease. Um, okay. And, and the lease any has, highlights? Um, if I recall, they're responsible for um, damages and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, they're responsible for the appliances. Um, if they're damaged. And we did, I'll, I'll jump in there too, cause I'm gonna add to that. We gave you guys a move in form. Yeah. So they're gonna walk around and do a move in form. They're also gonna, and have the tenant sign off on it. They're also gonna do a video like I just did. Yep. Walk through the house and say, here's the doors, here's the room, any problems, do you notice anything? The tenant's gonna say, no, I'm gonna put a camera on them. The tenant's gonna say, no, I'm gonna walk through the whole thing. So is there anything we need to do in this house for you? Are you okay with the way it is as is? So when you're gonna, and what's today's date? And what's your name? And they're gonna put it on there. We're gonna save that. If we have to go to court, and anything's broken two years down the road we're going to go to court with that same video and we're going to say here's the tenant themselves saying this is the date this is their name we walk through the house these are the videos of the house these are the pictures they also sign the move-in sheet when they move out there's going to be a move out sheet anything that's wrong other than stuff you're responsible for comes out of the security deposit if there's anything over the security deposit you could sue them and get a deficiency judgment against them what about parking is it deeded? there's Two, two, two spots, spots for the property. And where's the overflow? Down the street. <laughs> okay. So there is deeded parking here. I understand there's two spots. It's specifically designated for this property. Yes. And if they have more than two cars in a townhouse like this, it's probably a problem. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. What other protections would you put in place, or did you put in place? That's really it. That's really all you can. I, th I think you're totally protected when you do the walkthrough with them. Mm -hmm. You have the landlord tenant code. They're going to sign off on that. And I mean, they're going to have their insurance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what about? Obviously, things are going to age with wear and tear. Is that factored into the move and move out? Obviously, you're not going to get it back just like this. No, and that's why we're going to put aside some reserve. of the rent for maintenance so that when we're in between tenants, we can use that to update whatever needs to be upgraded. But most of what we put in mm -hmm. should last. That's why we did a lot of new. That's why we have the laminate vinyl plank for the downstairs. Um, so most of that should be fine with <coughs> the cleaning. Um, if it's beyond normal wear and tear, then it comes out of the security deposit. If it's normal wear and tear and needs to be replaced, that's why we set aside money to replace. Okay, here's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I, like the, I like the setup on that. No, here's a good one for you, okay? Obviously, four seasons, different weather, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Not everybody is, I'll say, ethical. That's a good term. <laughs> Being politically and correct, probably. Try it. Ethical as others, okay? So winter, snow, grass, cutting, that type of thing, maintaining the visual curb appeal. Who in your lease, in your arrangement, Tenet. is that going to fall on? Tenants are it's, it's, Yes, that. it's in residential. I'll, I'll add to that. I'm sorry to jump Please. in, but uh, resident in your lease, it will say that. It will spell out your responsible for landscaping, snow, and stuff like that. Commercial, because I own multifamilies too, yeah. you're responsible for the snow and landscaping, stuff like that. The owner is. But in residential, they are responsible for the landscaping and everything. If It'll say something in your lease, like if you do not uh, handle your landscaping, I'll have a landscaper come here and it'll charge you like $100 a cut or something like that. So you make it, and you most certainly that's how you do that in the lease. They're responsible for all the maintenance in the property like that. The, the upkeep, like that, the kind of maintenance they're responsible for. So, just to go back around, mowing of the grass and snow removal mm -hmm. of the common area, they're responsible. Yes, in residential, yes, they're responsible. And if it's it, not a so, common slip area. and fall, it's, that type of thing. It's, it's, the, it's, well, you have insurance, but in your lease, it, they will not be able to hold you responsible because it says they're responsible. And residential, you also have a landlord tenant code out here that they can sign off on. Mm -hmm. So I gave you that landlord tenant code, right? You don't print that out. Just email it to them and have them sign the receipt that says that they have it. Because I think it's like 100 pages. But on, <laughs> on residential, they are responsible for, we make them responsible for all landscaping, snow removal and stuff like that. 
Once again, if it was a multifamily, I would be responsible as the owner for that. I have to handle that. Good to know. So there is a distinction. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And other than your HOA, you're not responsible for anything else as far as common area, snow removal, pool uptake, just the HOA, and it takes care of that, correct? Correct. Okay. And what do you mind? How much is your HOA for the year? A year. It's yearly. It's very. $45. It's like nothing. Yeah, this one's really low. It's nothing. There's not much here for, except paid. for the pool. It was paid. We prorated paid mm -hmm. when we did the closing, and right. it was not much. Oh, you got some good kudos here, guys. My yeah, project, my project manager slash partner, <laughs> one of my best guys that I work with, Matt. You got to hear him, Matt Reed, right yeah. in Ohio. Yeah. He's like very real info, so valuable for new investors to get on the wealth <laughs> building. Great job, he said. Thank you very much. So you got a project manager. Who's done a couple hundred properties himself? Saying great job to you guys. That's kudos. He's a great. He's a great guy. Matt is a. He's good. He does. He's like me. He he believes when we do our properties in Ohio, we do them the same exact way. We believe in maintenance free. We don't want problems with tenants. We want tenants taken care of. And he does those video walkthroughs too with our tenants. Same exact thing I'm telling you guys to do. Eviction process in Delaware. How long does it take? I'll, I'll go through that because they haven't had to evict. Hopefully, they won't have to evict. <laughs> 60 to 90 days, you'll be in and out um, if you have all your records in order. Unless there's always a what if. The tenant comes and says, I have 16 babies and it's freezing cold. I have nowhere to go and pulls the you know hot strings of a, a JP court. Then maybe they get to stay a little bit longer. But it's very quick in Delaware. Within 90 days, they're done. They're out. You know, you file, but you just have to make sure if they're late, you have to treat it like a business. They're late on the 5th, you file, a, you know, a letter. You don't say, you know, you don't let them pull your part strings. You know, it's a business, you know. So there's other things you can do that, that, that helps that. Sometimes you have them, you know, you increase the rent and you tell them if they pay you early to get a discount. So instead of rent being thirteen fifty, it's fourteen fifty. but if they pay about a third of the month, Matt implements that a lot in Ohio, then they can only pay thirteen fifty. So there's different things you could do like that to help, okay. you know, help people out. But when you give people a place like this, I don't want to say they never go late, but our, this, our, yes, and that's one of the things that, you stick to those late fees. Screening site. Mm -hmm. One of the indicators it provides back to you uh, is that the the likelihood of the person being late right. or not, and their history as well. Just remember that most people are not going to have the greatest credit when you do right, that. Yeah. So don't get caught up in that because if they did, they would buy this house. <laughs> it's very easy to go buy a house these days. Mm -hmm. um, but you want to look for things like crime. You want to look for evictions. Mm -hmm. You want to look for that. You know, you want to check their pay stubs. You, you know, if they're if you're charging thirteen fifty, you want to make sure they're bringing home at least four thousand. They're making at least four thousand a month. Mm -hmm. You want to be about a third rent. So. Don't go against that. I'd rather place have a place vacant another month yes. than to put the wrong person in. So many people just rush the wrong people. Mm -hmm. um, so just make sure you look. And, and you can go over all that with me when you get yes. your, you can say, listen, can I go over all these tenants and kind of tell me what you think? They'll give you a credit rating. They'll give you, uh, it'll say like from 100 to 800 of whether you should rent to his tenant or not. Right. Um, but you, you, that number is so-so. Look at, you know, they'll give you the background check on people. Doesn't the site also give you a score? Yes. Yeah, they'll give you a score. Not but just the credit score, but a score of yeah, the tenants. Yes, they'll give you their score. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying, the 1-800, it's that kind of score like that. It'll say, you know, it, you know anyone under 200 is a, credit, is, a, is a risk of renting to anyone. But you want to look a little deeper than what that says. You just want to look at, because sometimes it could be a lot of medical collections. And that's not, their insurance just didn't cover the medical Right. So you got to look, you don't just look at that score. Mm -hmm. We'll go through it when you're at that okay. point. But that's kind of the things I saw. You know, when you have a high end apartment, you get people with good credit. When you have like apartments like, like in this range, people aren't paying 3000 a month. People are going to have issues with credit. Otherwise they go buy a house. Right. So just as long as they have a job. So in this one, I'm going to recommend people make about, uh, about 4,000 a month mm -hmm. in income. Cause you're at 1350 mm -hmm. and they, no evictions in the last five years. Check the criminal background, obviously. <laughs> that's important. Nobody has killed their last landlord. And that's in the lease, too. Yeah, that you're not allowed to kill the landlord. <laughs> <laughs> those, are the two, those are the important things I look for. You know, credit, you will see medical collections galore on them. So that's kind of what we look for. You're not going to get the perfect credit score coming in here. You're just not. Okay. What type of time do you look for? Uh, 
outside of those metrics, what do you, I know you're not looking for a pet, I know you're not looking for, you know, the smell, but what type of person do you We'll see. Want? We'll see who shows up. I mean, um, someone I, just said, as you're saying that, Matt also said, Matt, you missed it. We already talked about being able to eyeball the tenant. That's why you do an open house. Yeah. He said, secret item, look at the tenant's car. Clean car equals clean house. We talked about this about 20 minutes ago, though. But uh, definitely, uh, we look at their car. We, sm we see the tenants that they smell like smoke. Uh, we know they're smokers. If we see the kids are all rowdy and disheveled when they come in here, we know that that's how they're going to treat the house. Okay, so we've definitely talked about that. But, yeah, that's why you want to do your own open houses and you want to kind of eyeball, get an eyeball on the tenants. Um, for that reason, you want to see how they act, how the kids act, how they're maintained. And uh, like I said, more important thing is if they smell like smoke or alcohol, you know what you got coming into your house. Yeah, so I don't think there's another way to answer the question of how, what kind of tenants like, I wouldn't even know how to... Are you looking for transient? Are you looking for family? Are you looking for... Oh, good for, question. Okay. Are you looking for students? Are you looking for... Well, I, I, call a I, I think this place would appeal to someone with a family. Because it's three bedrooms. It's three bedroom. A student would probably try to rent out all the rooms to everybody, <laughs> which is not allowed. There's no subletting. There's no anyway. subletting. So, uh, I think uh, the family would, would be ideal for this. That's why we went with the three bedroom. What about we, college students? Um, uh, this, this we're at a distance from the university here, so I don't think college students would be looking around yeah. here. Um, if we were closer to the university, then that would be a different story, and it'd probably be either multifamily with one bedrooms or uh, that kind of thing where it's it's designed for students. And honestly, if this was by University of Delaware, this house, as crazy as it sounds, would probably be over half a million dollars. Because, really? Yeah, because you can get shack, you get shacks there, and I know this because I've been looking. I have a friend who owns eleven properties there, mm -hmm. and you get shacks there because what they'll do is they'll take every bedroom and they'll say, okay, we have a license to put two people per bedroom at like eight hundred dollars a month each. So you start <laughs> figuring out the rent, and you can probably use the basement to put a bedroom. Yeah. It's all licenses, and those licenses are grandfathered in the city of Newark. Mm -hmm. So it's very hard. You can't buy a, you can't make a house college, you know, student housing anymore. Unless it already has the licenses, it's like getting a, 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 um, a, a ABC license for a bar, or like a, a TLC license for your cab. So it's very expensive, and it's a different. I have friends that, I mean, I own a property. Uh, we just sold a couple properties too by Temple. We own one. It's it's a different it's a different business model. It's a student housing business model. Mm -hmm. You figure you have you you just one year and that's it, and they're gonna wreck your house. So there's only so much you can get from them on it. So you try to put their parents on the lease, but then you have to deal with the parents. So right. it's, yep. we're the students. We, it's a, we're in, you guys were great we're students. Housing, you know, yeah, you guys are great students. students most likely a student would have, wouldn't get the score yeah. I need yeah. to, 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 to rent. The student thing. wouldn't come this far from this. I mean, we're, we're probably 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're flexible. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you think of anything? Yeah, what was the name of that website to score your tenants? Which one did I give you? Uh, Craig Co. Craig Co. Mm -hmm. it's, it's on the... Yeah, Zillow. I mean, Zillow even has... I use them. I like Craig Co. the best. I actually put it on that like, that post. So if you go to that post, you, you'll grab it. Okay. That post I put on the Facebook page, you, you'll see the it's on there. That's the one I've used like four different ones, and I like them the best. But there's so many scorings out there. You could try any one you want. In closing, is there anything else that you can add, having gone through it? Not what you would do differently, but these are the key things that were significant to you when you were first looking. I, I think, uh, other than truthfully, Dan, what do you got? <laughs> we relied on Dan. Uh, we had been in the market for a while to find a place. Um, what set this one off as opposed to, I don't know. Well, because it was one of the ones that Dan showed. I mean, he wasn't showing us a whole portfolio of different right. properties. This mm -hmm. was the one available. The timing worked out mm -hmm. um, to, to pick this one up. Um, okay. You know, the next one, we'll have a little more time. Mm -hmm. Maybe the first one Dan shows us, we'll say, no, nah, maybe not. Mm -hmm. Or maybe yes. You know? Yeah, you'll know what you like better and you don't. You know, and I'm, I, we've already started looking at other neighborhoods and developments going on Zillow and looking around, looking at 
what's out so. there, where other places are, where there are smaller um, properties that need to be rehabbed. Um, the goal is ultimately that they, that you can learn enough that you start finding your own spot stuff. Mm -hmm. That's ultimately, but you know, in the beginning, it's really hard to get started because not to know what to look for, how to even find these properties. Mm -hmm. You know, for us to find them is, is even tough. Somebody that doesn't know what they're doing to find them, it gets very tough. So it's how to find them and stuff like that. So did now you have, to, Did you have a type of neighborhood in mind when you first started looking? Like, I'm definitely not going to be in this type of a neighborhood or like this type of house? Or, no, no, no. I mean, it's obviously if, BC if, if, the, if this was a, a, a single family house, um, that had a small yard that would have been just as fine mm -hmm. as a center townhouse. I mean, yeah, I have some investors that only want townhouses. I have some that only want single family homes. And I have I have one investor that he only wants condos. That's all he wants. He doesn't want to take care of it. He doesn't he just puts the numbers of the HOA in his in his budget. And if it works, it works. He only wants condos. So everybody's a little they don't want to maintain anything on the outside. Mm -hmm. It's a lot less maintenance for them doing a condo, but they have to deal with a condo board. So some people don't want condos for that reason. So everybody has a different fit for them. Maybe it'll be townhouses. Maybe it won't. It just depends. I mean, townhouses are great uh, for me. I, as far as rentals in Delaware, townhouses are my favorite, even over single families. Oh. A lot less work for me. Yeah, it's just it's just cookie cutter. It's easy. Thank you so That's much good. for allowing us. You're welcome. Yeah. This has been very did an awesome job renovating. Thank you. Right. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. If you have any other questions, just post them here. I'm sure, uh, you know, I'll tag Bill and I don't know if Karen's on here, but I'll tag Bill and <laughs> and uh, Wendy and Dave. And if, if they can answer, they can answer as well because they're here. So uh, appreciate all the feedback. And uh, thanks for being on, Matt, and giving your feedback. It's always you know, appreciated. And you guys did an awesome job. Welcome to the investor world. Thank you. Thank you.